Hey y'all, Driver the Ruler back with another one. If you are new here, welcome to my channel. If you are not new here, my A1 Day 1, y'all already know, like, I love y'all like y'all love me. If you are new here, my name is Rajava. I did eight and a half years off of a 10 year sentence in Department of Corrections in the state of Florida for trafficking in cocaine. If you have any questions about anything, um, you can go look at the videos on my channel. I've documented most of it and the questions that you have, I'm sure I've answered most of them, um, but we are just gonna jump right into it. And so we're gonna talk about why I was denied work release. Now, if you don't know what work release is, which I'm sure a lot of y'all do not know, work release is basically as the inmate, when you get down to the end of your sentence, you get to go to an outside facility. And at that outside facility, you get to wear regular clothes, you get to be in the real world, you can have a job, earn money, and put it away and save for when you get home. You have to have good behavior. You can't get into any trouble or anything like that. And there are certain charges that automatically disqualify you from being able to go to work release. But as long as you don't have those disqualifying charges, everybody looks forward to going to work release because who don't want to go home with some scummy? Like who wants to go home broke? So you have four different custodies. You have the highest level, which is closed custody. You have medium custody. You have minimum custody. And then you have community even though i had a trafficking charge and when i was in the county jail i was considered maximum security when i got to prison it wasn't the case i was minimum custody the duration of the time i was in prison and the only thing that can drop you from minimum to community is you have to stay in trouble and you have to get down to the last like 28 to 24 months of your time if you have any more than like 24 to 28 months then you can't drop to community because you have too much time so time and good behavior are the only things that allow you to drop so i was at gaston right and that's in quincy florida it's like the panhandle the top of florida it was very much cold there and i like gaston now they were very very petty okay and they stressed you out and aggravated you on every single corner but gaston had a lot of programs it had a lot of opportunities so when it came to like being able to do stuff with your time gaston was an amazing place to do that but i ended up getting transferred from Quincy to Hernando County, which was Hernando CI. It was a faith-based program and I only got transferred so that I can get visits. When I was at Gaston, I was like eight hours away from home. So I felt like that's why people did not come see me because I was so far away. So even though it was in my best interest to stay at Gaston because it offered me so much more. And plus you go to work really so a lot faster at Gaston than anybody else. Now we don't know if that's true, but that's just what we thought, you know, and we still think that. But I ended up going to Hernando CI in Hernando County, which is faith-based. Now, mind you, it's, it was a very small compound. There was only like 450 inmates there. There was no AC, okay? It was like hot. There was no AC. It was fans all the time. But I wanted to get visits, so I ended up going to Hernando. Um, when I was at Hernando, I did get three visits. Those were the only three visits I got while I was in prison was at Hernando. So I guess it did kind of help out. So in prison, I got to Hernando. It was like I was over halfway done with my time. It was time for me to start winding down. So you get to the point where you're tired of playing prison. Like you're tired of jumping through the hoops and doing the everyday things that you've been doing for so long. So certain stuff you just be tired of doing. So when I got to Hernando, there's a such thing is called public works or outside grounds. Now public works, you go outside and you work in the community, um, picking up trash. They do all kinds of things and the prison gets paid for that labor. I mean, they get paid for that labor. And so when you get down to community custody, that's when they want you to start going outside the gate. So I was down to being able to drop from minimum to community. And they called me into ICT. And ICT is basically when you get a job. So to go from one job to the next, you go to ICT. So if you work in the kitchen and you wanna to go to laundry, you have to go to ICT for them to assign you to laundry. So it's like an interview kind of but not really like an interview because you're not interviewing for the job when they call you in the ict you have the job it's just switching you from one task to the next so you have to go to ict to get your job changed so i was working in the kitchen at hernando now out of all the places to work food service i have to say hernando did not have a bad food service it was not like slave labor you know i enjoyed working in food service at hernando it was a nice compound so they called me to ICT and I'm like, where am I going? Okay, I just got put in the kitchen. Like, where am I going? So they called me in there and they was like, okay, we want to put you on public works, which is like outside grounds. So I was like, I did not want to work on public works. For one, they work for real. 
Okay, they 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 work for real. Just like at the work camp, I never wanted to go to the work camp because them girls work for real, cutting down trees all in the bushes. Like them girls really be working, okay, for the free, for zero dollars and zero cents. So I'm down to the end of my time. I don't had to jump through hoops for the state. I don't had to do my time. I, there's things where I've put been put in situations where I couldn't say no. I just had to do it. Sick, bad days, depressed, in my feelings. It didn't matter. Like you got to get up and you got to go to work. So when they called me into ICT and they was like, you're getting put on public works. Now, when you go to ICT, you got all of classification, which is, it's kind of hard for me to explain classification, but those are basically the people that you have to go through for anything. If you're trying to go to work release, when it's time for you to sign, you have to go through classification. Um, if there's something wrong with your custody, you got to go through classification. If you're trying to get a job change, you got to go through classification. So like classification is kind of like your counselor to do anything in prison pretty much like as the person that you go to like it's like your assistant like you know how if you were trying to do something you would tell your you would go to your assistant be like hey you know what about this what about that it's like that but it's not like that because they don't work for you okay they they not your friend they're not gonna your assistant gonna listen to you your classification officer gonna do what the hell they want to do but to get your phone list approved it has to go through classification so anything that you want you have to go through classification okay so the whole classification board is there when you go through ict um sometimes it's a captain or a lieutenant so you know you got all the big wigs right there so they call me and they're like you gonna go to public works so i don't want to go outside and work real labor that y'all are getting paid for for free i just no like i don't want to do that like I do not want to go outside and actually physically work. And I know those people are probably like, girl, that's just you being lazy or you in prison. You don't have an option. You do have an option when it comes to a job. Okay. You don't have an option while you're working that job. Like if you're at work and you're like, oh, I don't want to do this no more. You're going to jail for refusal to work. But when you're in ICT, you do have an option to decline a workload or job title. Like you have the option to be like, I don't want to do this. Now they can force you and be like, well, this is what you're assigned to. Um, if you don't want to be in this job, you'll still have to report and you got to go through the proper paperwork, you know, to get a new job change. But you do have the option to speak on yourself. They either going to tell you yay or nay. And if they tell you nay, they're going to tell you why and what you can do to go around it. Or they're going to tell you like, okay, we understand and we'll move you to a different one, blah, 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 blah. So I'm in here and I'm like, um, you know, permission to speak. And it was like, yes, ma'am, you can go ahead. And I was like, I don't really want to do outside grounds. I don't want to do public works. And they were like, well, why would you not want to do it? And I was like, I don't feel comfortable working that hard. I was like, I'm not at a place in my time where I want to work that hard on outside grounds. I was like, those girls really work. And I was like, I don't want to work that hard. That's literally what I told them. I was like, I, that's not what I want to do. I wanted to tell them, like, I don't want to go slave for y'all to get paid and then for me to get nothing. But I was like, I don't want to. I was like, I don't feel comfortable working that hard at this point in my time. I was like, I just want to breeze through the rest of my time so that I can go home. So, you know, these people told me they was like, OK, it was like, you'll remain in food service. You'll keep your assigned tasks. Da, 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 da. So I'm like, OK, thank you. You know, y'all have a good day. And it was like, you know, next. So I leave out everything is good nobody said nothing to me nothing they just said okay you remain in food service have a nice day so i leave and you get a game time sheet um once a month it's kind of like your paycheck but ain't no money on it but every single month um based off of where your game time is at because your date can move um all the way up into 85 percent. so my max out date was um june excuse me it was december 19th 2022 that was my max out date so if i got in trouble the latest i would have went home like my date would have been december 2022 which is the december who had just passed and my early date which was my 85 percent date was june 15 2020 so you start out at your max date so the first paycheck or um game time sheet that you get is gonna have your max date so the first one i got said december 19 2022 and you get to earn 10 days game time every single month as long as you're not in trouble if you go to confinement you get zero days that month and if you get in trouble and they take game time like if you get a dr and they like 30 days lost the game time they're gonna push that date back 30 days so you don't earn this game time and they're gonna push it back 30 days closer to your max out date so every single month you get a game time sheet and it'll give you your updated date so you earn your 10 days because you've been good so the next uh, month i would get a game time sheet that says that my release date is december the 9th 2022 and it moves 10 days every single month so you get this printout and they make sure you know where you're at every single month even if you have life 
or if you have mandatory time and you don't get game time, you still gonna get that sheet. And it's so depressing, like seeing them pass out those papers and the people who have life, like they don't even look at the paper, they just ball it up. Or when they call out names, like, cause sometimes they'll come around, they'll pass them out and then sometimes they'll call out your name and make you come up there and get them. And when they call out names of people who have like life, they be like, I don't want it, throw it away. Like it, it's, they date says nine, 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 nine. 9999. So how mine says 12 19 2022, theirs says 9999. And it's, oh, it's, listen. So I got my game time sheet and it has your custody on there. It has like a array of things on there. So when I got my game time sheet and I seen, you know, my day had moved and I'm like, mm, got my game time. And then I seen that it said, um, closed custody. And I was like, closed custody. Wait a minute. Now, I've been minimum custody since I came to prison. Okay. It's always been minimum. It was time for me to drop to community. And it had dropped to community because that's why they wanted me to go to public works. You can't go outside the gate if your custody is not community. So it dropped to community and I get my game time sheet and it says that I'm closed. So I'm like, closed custody i'm like there has to be a mistake so i got a request form which um anytime you need to communicate with any department whether it's medical classification property um you have to get a request form and it just has like your name your dc number what dorm you in um which department you want this to go to and then it's a little section that you write out what your request is and then at the bottom it's a comment section and they respond and send it back to the dorm so i wrote a request like hey you know i received my game time sheet and it shows that my custody is closed. And I was like, I'm not understanding. Like I haven't gotten in any trouble. I haven't gotten any DRs. So I'm not understanding why my custody is closed. You cannot go to work release. If you're, you can't go to work release unless your, your custody is community, but you really not going to work release if your custody is closed because it has to drop levels. So if you're at minimum and it's almost time for you to go to work release and you get a DR, which is a disciplinary report, which is like a referral in school, it takes you up to medium custody and then you have to be good keep earning your game time and then it'll slowly drop back to minimum for it to drop back to community so every time it raises up a level you have to wait on it to drop back to the level that you're at to drop lower to community so i went from minimum past medium to close so i'm getting down to the end of my sentence the closer you get to the end of your sentence you run out of time for your custody to drop so many levels so i'm like wait a minute like i got to go from here to here so i wrote them i'm like you know it's i haven't been in any trouble i haven't gotten any drs like like what's going on and you can get cc's too which is not a dr but they can take game time off of a cc so it's like if a dr is like a referral in school then a cc is like a detention slip right i ain't got no cc's i ain't got nothing so i wrote classification i wrote, waited on them to respond These people labeled me an escape risk because I told them I didn't want to go outside the gate. They labeled me an escape risk because I told them that I did not want to go outside the gate and work for them. Not because I told them if I go outside the gate, I, I'm going to escape. If I go outside the gate, I feel like I'm a run. If I go outside the gate, I don't know if I'll be able to come back to prison. I, I, I didn't say none of that. And even if I did feel like that, I wouldn't have told y'all that. Like, I didn't tell on my co defendant, so I know damn well y'all ain't think I was going to get a classification to tell on myself if I wanted to escape or if I was thinking about escaping. Like, y'all couldn't have thought that. Them people closed my custody and labeled me an escape risk. That hurted my heart so bad because I already did not have support while I was in prison. I was already the broke. I was broke pressed, okay? So I knew when I come home, well, nobody gonna be able to help me from what I was hearing from my family over the years and like hearing about the friends and stuff I had, the people that I was rolling with, people wasn't doing too good. So even if I would have got out and they would have wanted to help me, it was only so much help they could have gave me. So I knew going to work release was the only foot that I would have to go home and have some money in my pocket so I wouldn't have to struggle. And mind you, I was going home to probation, which I'm on now. When you're on probation, you have to have an address. So if I don't have money to have an address, that's already a violation. Like, I can't go home homeless. I have to go home with an address. I have to go home with all of this stuff. Like, I have to pay my court fines. The month of I'm, me getting out, like, I have to have transportation to go to work. Like, I can't go home with $0.00, .00 and still be productive on probation. 
So I was so in my feelings, like I cried like a baby because I was not able to go to work release because they closed my custody and it remained closed the entire time I was in prison. They Once they label you a security risk, a flight risk, a escape risk, that's in your file forever. Even if I, God forbid, was to get in trouble and go back to prison, I would still be labeled an escape risk and my custody would remain closed. And compounds like Gaston that I told you, it has a lot of things to offer like programs and things you can do with your time to an inmate you have to be at least medium custody or below like they don't even really like taking people who's medium custody but you have to be below close you cannot be below you can't be closed custody at Gaston you can't have more than 15 years and your custody can't be closed so if something was to happen god forbid and I ended up back in the system I wouldn't even be able to go to the compound that will offer me the most which is the compound I was teamed out to because that's the one I was sent to I wouldn't even be able to return because they let me escape risk because I did not want to slave for them. So I came home and had to like get it out the mud, which I did, you know, I got to do what I got to do, but I came home and I had to get it out the mud when I shouldn't have had to, because y'all should have told me that in classification. Y'all should have told me that, you know, by denying going outside the gate, we're going to have to label you blah, 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 because of this. Because I did not tell y'all I felt like I was going to run. I did not say anything to y'all that would have gave you the impression that I was going to try to escape or run. I was at the end of my time. If I was going to try to escape or run, I would have did that in the beginning. When I was still trying to come to grips with these 10 years that I had to sit here. Not on my way out the door. And they definitely did that. Oh, I was, listen, I cried. Oh my gosh, I cried so freaking much because I was just like... It took so much for me to believe in myself, believe that I was going to be able to, you know, come home and be productive and take care of myself and survive. It took so much for me to build up the confidence to believe that. And a lot of that was based off of me knowing I was going to work release. So I was like, okay, I'm going to work here. I'm going to make this money and I'm going to save. So I'm probably going to go home with like five bands, seven bands. It just depends on how soon you go to work release. You can really go home with a decent amount of money. So I'm like, I can go home with this. And then I'll be able to do this, this, that, and the third. So a lot of my self-esteem on me being secure and comfortable with going home, I had to do a work release. And when they closed my custody and took that away from me, it just really upset me because it was another abuse of authority. It was another situation where someone used their power against me because they could, not because it was warranted, not because it was something I deserve, because I have the right to tell you I don't want to work in an assignment. I have that right. Like as an inmate, you have the right to say, I do not want to be an orderly. I do not want to be an aide. I do not want to work in food service. And they will tell you, you have to. You can file the paperwork to get moved to another one. But you have to, or they can tell you right then and there, especially when it's a privileged um, job title, like teachers, a um, orderly going outside. Those are privileges. Like a lot of people sit around and wait to be put in those job titles. So when it's a privilege, you can decline because it's like, it's not a punishment. So it's like, okay, well, we'll move you to another one or we'll leave you in the one that you in. Those people told me, okay, have a nice day and close my damn custody. Didn't tell me, didn't give me no warning, didn't submit nothing. I had to find out the hard way on my game time sheet. Yep, they closed my custody. So, y'all don't get in trouble, okay? Because the worst thing that can happen to you is not just going to prison. It gets worse when you get there. It is so many ways that it gets worse. Like, you think that's the bottom and that's the end all be all. Mm -mm. it's so many situations trials tribulations that you have to go through and endure and i had to i cried that thing out and i had to go back to god and be like listen i laid my future at your feet and i still believe you the same way i believed you when work release was on the table i believed you then and i still believe you now because you're bigger than work release you're bigger than anything that life can throw at me and i had it was so hard for me to lay that back at his feet because i wanted to hold on to it and dwell but I laid it back at his feet and look at your girl because who came home and did what they were supposed to do was me. And who knows, maybe me not having work release, not being able to go to work release and having that nest egg to come home to. Maybe that's what turned me into the beast I was because I worked two jobs seven days a week, nonstop for a year and a half. No days off. OK, so maybe I worked like that because I had to, you know, so it's a blessing. But y'all be safe. Y'all have a good day. I hope y'all enjoyed the video. Talk to y'all later.